Welcome to Open Session 12 with Greg Stafford, where I talk about different things that I think are important for people like me who follow the beliefs of Christianity and try to become better people, help others do the same as well to the extent that they're interested. But our main focus is to promote good reasons for belief in the biblical God whom we call Jah. Others refer to him as Jehovah, some as Yahweh, although we don't believe that's a correct way to pronounce the name, either originally or as we speak in English in using anglicized forms today. But this show is not about Yahweh or the form of the divine name we used. That's just the God we worship. So we promote the God Jah, Jahowah. But we try not to make too much of an issue with others who use other forms of that name although sometimes it does come up. So, as Christians, we have to deal with others at times who have similar beliefs to us, but that also have some meaningful differences. Nonetheless, we try to set those aside, at least if you're like me, so that we can fo focus on promoting belief, right? Instead of arguing or debating amongst ourselves ongoingly, endlessly. We try to take our beliefs and the best reasons for them, such as the historical and scientific evidence that we can point to and have done to show there is one, namely life, eternal life, who gave life to life, and that in the history of humankind, we can identify, at least in our view and our readings of texts like the Bible and related texts, as Jehovah. We believe that that God that is described as creating the earth in a way that we've discussed and reviewed and shown is true. Originally meant something different for us, but because of things that happened to us, foretold of a seed or a Messiah, a Christ, the one you hear so much about when it comes to Christianity. So we believe that Christ is a savior, a sent forth one, a son of God, a spirit being, who became a human, just like Adam was, but who didn't do the things that Adam did, and so in God's eyes was just. And that's why the Christ is referred, referred to as a sacrifice, as giving his life in exchange for Adam, who gave his life for doing something wrong. So this is our belief in the sort of um, redemption by God. And then our third primary belief is what you've, you've, you've likely heard of as the golden rule. Those are our three things, right? As Christian witnesses of Jah, there are also three things that pretty much every other Christian group, although there would be some differences, as I said, about the divine name and whether, whether even to use it, but nonetheless, in terms of the one God, the Father, and there are differences there too, like we talk about in the Bible and the Trinity and conflict videos, but this is just sort of a quick view because the show really is about Christian living. Living as a Christian. Okay, that, so the Christian, but we know when we're talking about that, it could mean a couple of different things. And so if you look at the thumbnail that I put up for the show, you can see an example of what I'm talking about. Um, that is Christianity or living as a Christian involving different things. So you have an, in the le on the left side of the thumbnail for this show an individual reaching down, right? Extending his hand, prepared, right? Well-dressed, not under distress, backpack, clothes matching the environment, healthy looking, prepared to assist, right? Someone who's gotten up above someone else and did so in a way who can now effectively assist someone on their way up. And so that's why you have the hand extending out. And then on the right side, you have something different, right? You have a wolf and a man in more desperate straits, still able, right? Still prepared to face the challenge but not having yet overcome it. And so we find ourselves at times dealing with these different aspects of life. They could be different um, 
issues involving Christian or Christian brothers, quote unquote, and sisters, right? People who believe the three things that I mentioned like us, but who view them differently than us, whether in pronouncing the divine name, whether it's the Trinity, whether it's viewing Jesus as something different than the Son of God, more or less. And then, while most kind of, you know, will agree on the golden rule, there's some differences, of course, in its application, what that, what is meant, but a lot of the controversy would, would fall under those first two that I mentioned. Who is God and who is the Messiah? But then, while, while we just have those three that are primary, and right, every Christian witness of Jah has different beliefs, we just focus on the three as the required beliefs to work with each other without getting involved and in, getting too involved so that we can't promote those three things, right? That's essentially what we agree to focus on together to whatever extent possible. If it's necessary to discuss some related subject, well, of course we do that, right? But that's not like it's the most a related subject. If it's related, it's because it's derived from the more important. So we have those three above everything else. But, but other groups who would even disagree with one or more of those things have more, right? So like I talked about in the pre-show, certain groups, like, for example, the Watchtower, right? they would agree with us on number one, right? One God the Father, divine name, you know, more or less. The, the Messiah, the Son, for pretty much uh, 100%, in, in most respects, I should say, right? The extent to which he has to be Michael or not might be a difference. But either way, pretty close. So, and then the Golden Rule. But the Watchtower, for sure, right? Everyone acknowledges, hey, those are not their only three rules, those are not the only three things that you need to uh, accept and promote in order to be accepted. A lot more comes with it, but we're not going to get into that. It's just an example, right? It's the same with a group, groups like Catholics, right? They have different things that as a Catholic you have to follow, that you accept, you agree with, right? more than just the three that I mentioned that we follow. And that could be the, the case with other uh, groups as well, Protestant groups, Mormons, right? There's certain things that define people who are part of those faiths, even if we find common ground on some of these core things. I talked about this a little bit in the, uh, you know, who are the Christians video. Just trying to sort of articulate things like this in a way that would show what we're all facing. Right? This, this is what we're facing, right? So when we talk about living as a Christian, well... A big part of that, as we'll get to in a moment, involves just dealing with other people who aren't, you know, quite Christian at all or who oppose us like you see in the right side of the thumbnail, the, the man against the wolf, right? So we're going to go through a lot of different situations and feel free to post something in the chat. Like I see George doing, uh, George Lopez says... Oh, I see. He's making a comment on another on a question. Okay, and he's actually um. So here's a here's a question. Well, I mean that's sort of related. <laughs> I did talk about it in the pre-show, and that is whether, for example, I would consider someone like Athanasius a Christian brother. Right, it ties in with this discussion of how we don't always get along with people who don't agree with us, even on some of the more important things. Right. So I've talked about Ath Athanasius in our training in the con in the Bible and conflict videos, but, and especially most recently. Right, and so I believe. You know, he professed himself as a Christian. And this ties in with what we're going to talk about, right? It's very important in my view, what I've experienced, what I've come to know and learn from the texts that we all agree and, and hold dear, the sacred texts. Very important that we allow individuals to be judged. And to do that, we have to reserve a certain judgment. Now, we can point, if, if certain individuals are being especially disruptive, especially damaging to Christian belief and activity, then they need to be called out for that. And they, they can, and to be corrected, right? That's the whole point. Hey, you know, what are you doing? Why is this happening? 
Well, so we know they went through that in these earlier centuries leading up to councils like Nicaea and, and thereafter. And so they just, you know, continued to battle each other in ways where once the Trinitarians aligned with Constantine and, and became more a part of, of the Roman Empire as a state religion in that way, it was just they won out in that respect. But not always. There were always non-Trinitarians, anti-Trinitarians. So, and and that's, you know, something we'll talk about on another time when we get further into the periods where the councils took place. But if Athanasius or any Trinit, even John Calvin, right? Obviously, John Calvin, some of the things he's done that he didn't have to do, that as a Christian he shouldn't have done, but, you know, and that are pretty horrendous on the scale of human treatment, right? <laughs> Nonetheless, John Calvin, same with Russell, right? Russell, all of them. If a person openly confesses the Son and claims faith in Him, while we can point out things they do wrong and that contradict that proclamation, especially if it's ongoing and misleading people a lot, right? <laughs> they're a danger in that way. So, nonetheless, right, they're, the, they're proclaiming faith in someone who can read them in a way we cannot. No matter how heretical, erroneous, or dangerous we may see them, right, we have to reserve ultimate judgment to God. So that's how I would see Athanasius, right? But yet they would see us, like Athanasius himself said, as someone like Caiaphas, right? A high priest who had Jesus put to death and who was, you know, so they see us, yeah, this ties in with what we're talking about, living as a Christian, living in particular as one of us, right? So we have the golden rule that almost every Christian group would say they follow or proclaim is correct. So in that sense, right, they're one of us, right? We should... You would think we would have a lot in common, especially even with one and two in many ways. But nonetheless, the differences tend to uh, make the rest of no effect. And so then what happens is that the contention, right? Then the, the hatred, then the, the extremely negative um, depiction, the abuse, really, right? Then the discrimination. It happens. It happened back um, in these early centuries of Christianity, where these groups fought with each other so much, they ended up hating each other when you read their comments, or read the way they talk about each other, right? especially since most of what we have is the Trinitarians, but with the way they talk about the Arians, I mean, it's, and yet when they quote what the Arians are saying, depending on how accurate it is, a lot of it's just biblical text, but then they just don't agree with what it said, what it means. So, that's the more difficult part of living as a Christian. It is. <laughs> it's just the thing you're going to have to learn to accept if you firmly believe that the teachings are true. Because there's no way to correct all of the different beliefs that the different quote-unquote Christian groups promote and protect, right? And by protect, I mean you threaten them when you don't accept them. And especially if you teach against them, right? Or, you know, if you're someone like me, right? I mean, even though I try to be balanced, we all know that. I accept Trinitarians and their belief in the Trinity if they sincerely believe it and use it to, um, you know, properly understand the things that we don't think are a problem, but that they may see like polytheism in ways that, right, they've been influenced so much by the Trinity and Trinitarians, it's just hard for them to deal with the sons of God as gods and the way that they're presented and Jesus the same way. So, but to a greater extent, positionally, given the name above every name, we've talked about it. They've got everybody loaded up with metaphysical baggage. And by they, I mean, so we're mostly talking about Trinitarians, but everybody else does too, right? So I don't want to just pick on them. Right? We have our own series dealing with it. <laughs> But not really because of them. It's more the Trinity and what it does to them. And of course they have to choose. But still, I don't want to just use that group. But they show the difficulty we have. Do they not, if you're like me, do you not mostly deal with people in Christianity who believe in the Trinity? And do they not mostly make it difficult for you? Right? They're not they're not gonna help you promote one, two, and three the way we, we believe them. No way. Right? Maybe situationally, if you have to help people, charity and stuff, 
maybe some would put it aside and say, okay, let's get this done, right? Especially in a, like a um, emergency, like a um, catastrophe of some kind. People will do it then. But <laughs> when, when things are more peaceful, right? When we have a better opportunity to affect change and we're not dealing with the worst conditions, right? Even though that's good, people can do it when it's, when it's terrible. It's still, why can't we do it when it's normal? Well, it's because of the way people have been presented who think others are wrong. Even in the same groups like I'm talking about right now. We're dealing with us first and, and foremost, if not entirely, because it's living as a Christian. We'll bring others up as it relates to how we have to live or are trying to live. But this is part of the difficulty of living as a Christian, is it not? Dealing with Christians or those who proclaim to proclaim the things that the Bible says, the Son of God, but then have a lot of other things they believe are true, and that because you don't believe are true or necessary, they don't like you. They really don't. And there's a dislike in many cases, right? Maybe not every time, but when whenever an argument takes place and it's very rare it doesn't devolve into some kind of demeaning expression or implication. And so living as a Christian involves difficulty with people of our own religion. First and foremost, it really does. But is that, again, any different? I, I earlier in the pre-show, had been talking about something previously and the difficulties we face today, but how we have an earlier model to follow. And so it's like, okay, well, this is not like unexpected. You know, this is not like, well, where, why is this happening, right? It's like, oh, yeah, this, we've read about this. This has happened. So what we're going through, as weird as it is in that way, right, as, as hard as it is for us to connect with people of our faith in many ways, by faith I'm talking more in the broad sense of, of Christian, and then of course we have the divisions within, but there's hatred between. Right? It's not like just, it's not like a body with different members working together and we're kind of like sometimes saying, hey, hey, come on, you know, foot, let's get going, or like, you know, it's not like, it's like, now you're going to get, I'm going to cut you off, right? <laughs> in terms of the metaphorical representation, certain groups like Trinitarians, and, and even I would say even certain groups like maybe certain Watchtower apologists dislike the Trinitarians so much. They're on both. It's not just Trinitarian apologetic nods, right? And so, and even among Trinitarians, they're not all that way. Think of, think back, right? If this is parallel to what we read about in the texts, and we see during Jesus' time people doing what? Pretty much the same thing. Although, you know, we hadn't gotten past the death of Jesus Christ yet. But uh, but in terms of God being one and, you know, essentially, you know, there's no real dispute in the biblical text about the divine name. More or less what the Messiah would do in different ways where Jesus could quote texts like Psalm 2. Golden rule. So all that was in place not acceptance fully of him. I get that. I'm not saying that. But but him, the Messiah coming and this pivotal role and, and many things, Psalm 110 as well, things he could use to stumble them because he knew they accepted them as relating to him. Okay, even in spite of all that, having those texts in common, having that God in common, having Abraham as their father, right, in the patriarchal sense, They, they weren't the same at all. So much so that Jesus could say, he's not your father. Why? You're not doing his works. Yeah, you're related to him. But other than that, you don't look like his children. <laughs> right? Yet, were they not regularly, daily promoting the biblical text of Jehovah that pertained to him? Right? I mean, so when you look at the first century religious community, of the pre of the Jewish Christians before of the Jews before Christianity, right? And as Christianity was sort of happening, developing through Jesus and the teachings, you had this similar division. You had people like the Pharisees and others, not always the Pharisees, scribes, scholars, and others that they hated Jesus. It wasn't just, you know, okay, he's not like us. He's got different views. They, 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 they rejected him. It wasn't like just this, 
oh, you're claiming to be this thing, and oh, no, I'm not. It's, these are major, major rejections and major claims. But even apart from some of the claims, right? I mean, he, they just didn't like him. They didn't like his view of how they were handling the, the money in the temple. Right? That was a huge deal, right? So yet they all claim to be worshiping the same God. So you have massive differences among the same group of people following the same laws. So it's no surprise. It shouldn't be. It's not to me. It's disheartening, right? I mean, I we have to live as Christians dealing with some of the same things. Like with the widow whom Jesus said gave more than everybody else. Right, So that's how I think it's important for us to see a lot of these other groups. They may make it difficult for us on the you know, apologetic level or even the structural societal level where they maybe is a large uh, group of Catholics or Protestants or Mormons or Watchtower people, right? They have an influence in a certain area and because they know you don't agree with them or even oppose some of their beliefs apart from the three, they don't, they'll, they'll kind of hold it against you. And they have leverage because of influence either maybe even via family, obviously, right, with the shunning and stuff. But it can go beyond that into society. And, and like I said, it can in, infect your job even on a religious level. Right? I'm not talking about the difficulties we have, which I'll get to later, living as Christians with non-Christians. And by non-Christians, I mean in the broad sense of people who don't claim anything. Right? They're, they're, not, they're none of the groups we're talking about right now under the broader umbrella of Christian in terms of how we have to live. Right? So if you were to accept the biblical God, Jehovah, the biblical Messiah, and the golden rule, treat each other the way you want to be treated, you would have to deal with a majority of people who more or less believe those same things, but who would think you're basically not in the correct path. And even on the path to destruction, right? I have Trinitarians tell me that often. Because they think in rejecting the Trinity, the metaphysic that defines what belief in the Trinity is, that I'm, you know, opposing God. And yet I'm just pointing out it's not taught in the biblical text, so why would I have to believe it? And it's not just whether I believe it, right? It's not like just what I do with Trinitarians and say, okay, if you really believe that, you need that, and that helps you connect with God, and it's just too difficult apart from the Trinity because of polytheism and the things you've been taught, but, but you're willing to su not openly promote it because you see the text and it's just individually you want to do that to keep you fine. That's not how they are, right? They, they, well, they, they believe the thing that's not taught will determine whether you are accepted. Whereas, you know, if I'm working with a Trinitarian, say in whatever line of work I'm doing, and they don't believe in the divine name, right? They only say Lord or God. They think the divine name is, we don't know the pronunciation or whatever reason, right? And they believe in the Trinity, right? So different from my view of the one God and the Messiah. But, but they believe in the golden rule. But let's just say I was working with a Trinitarian and they didn't uh, agree with me on those things. I wouldn't treat them any differently than a non than someone who didn't believe in God at all. Or even someone who like really was anti God. Now I would watch an anti God or more, right? Because if I believe in God and someone who's really opposed to God, you know, is is with me a lot, then it's foolish of me, since I'm not anti what they believe, I just don't agree with them, right? I'm talking about people who like actively try to suppressed belief in something. That's what I mean by anti in this context. So like even, it could be apologetic nuts on either side, right? People who might maybe for the Watchtower want to suppress anyone who disagrees with anything the Watchtower says. Right? So I wouldn't do that. So if I worked even with a Watchtower person and they really were, they were committed 100% to the governing body, faithful slave, and they thought they were the great crowd and they, they, they believe in the worldwide preaching work and all the, the things they believe are uniquely theirs in ways that um, uh, identify them as, as Jesus followers. Um, 
I would almost never bring it up. And by almost, I mean, unless, you know, there was a situation, right? If it, if they wanted to talk about it, and, and of course I would. But otherwise, it wouldn't even be a part of my approach to that person in a work environment because I already know they don't want to talk about it or it's not the time. And unless it's the time or the right opportunity or they really want to. So it wouldn't even be on my thinking to discriminate against them because of it. I just know we don't agree. There might be a time and a place somewhere. Maybe we'll be able to talk. Okay. Not everyone is the same way as that. In fact, many, especially who claim to be a part of these different Christian groups, will oppose you. If you haven't learned that already, you need to get familiar with and ready for this type of Christian, unchristian discrimination. It's unfortunate, but we're very divided in many ways right now over things having to do with subjects we've talked about, right? Who is God? Who is the Christ? And then other groups beyond us and our three views have a lot of other things they require you to believe or um, would say you have to believe in order to be accepted as, um, you know, approved members or full members or, or teaching essentially what they believe should be taught. So that's the one of the big difficulties we have. But the more we're aware of it, right, then we can determine how much to explain to people, right? Sometimes we have to be careful. So I talked about a little bit in the pre-show how sometimes it's easy to think of living as a Christian as having to produce a fast result, right? We want to, we're kind of, you know, maybe a little fired up, especially initially. That's just the way it is when you come to believe anything, really, right? You get a little zealous about it and you want to kind of share it with people. I think most people can even see that in people who are new to something. They're kind of like surging a little bit and it's affecting them. Okay, you know, so just keep in mind, so when you're new, that's that happens a lot with with people's faith and, and, and the way it affects them. But over time, I think you begin to learn that living as a Christian requires patience in dealing with other people. So we already talked about how dealing with other Christians, right, Trinitarians, People who believe in a, with other groups, right? A, a set of rules beyond the three, right? We try to give each other wide room to be accountable individually to whom? The master. That's what we're expressly taught to do. To his own master, each one stands or falls. Is that not true? Paul not write that to Romans? So we know that we have an accountability. John talks about Revelation 2. So does Jesus and John, right? He judged individually according to what we say or do. So, well, we don't earn things. The things that we say or do can affect people and then those things will ultimately be used to determine, you know, how we lived as individuals. So, it's very important that our perspective in dealing with other individuals is one that involves patience because you might have a zeal initially, but it at some point will level off a little or you'll, you'll in dealing with other people, begin to realize that that zeal can work both ways. It can be effective in convincing people, but it can also be effective in antagonizing people, even of Christian faith, right? So you might think you're helping people, showing them texts. Maybe you met someone at work or somewhere else and found out they're involved in this and they don't believe in the Trinity, and so you meet up with them, you have these, these discussions, that's normal. But you shouldn't always expect that that effort, that the things you're doing, trying to convince others that their, their quote-unquote Christian beliefs are wrong, may not always be viewed as good. Right? So that's another reason why, in addition to each person being accountable, you know, those who have read the Bible, biblical texts, have confessed Jesus, regardless of which group. That, that's another reason why you need to be careful spending your time with others who are have more qualifications than you do, or requirements, I should write, things you have to qualify for them to be approved, is because they might start to hate you. <laughs> 
They might start to uh, dislike you, and here you're thinking, well, this person's at least a part of a Christian group. I can talk to them, even if we disagree. Hey, you know, we're Christians. Not necessarily. And, and it would be better for you to think it might be detrimental, especially in a work environment, right? Where people can leverage position and influence against you. It's unfortunate, but it's simply the case that even if you only have three requirements, people have more that you'll have to meet. And they may not even agree with you on the three. So what can you do, right? Well, what I try to do is, again, if I know someone's already claiming to be a Christian, I almost never really talk to them unless... I can tell there's someone who will work with me in the ways that as a Christian I'm already involved with, right? I know what I want to do. All right, I want to help teach others the texts so they understand how to live life and what's going on in history and their place in the present system and what to look forward to, right? To give them a reasonable hope, something that you can test. It's not based on a fantasy or just what I hope is best. Something I've actually checked and I can say, okay, look, don't ignore these things, right? These are important regardless of what people say. So, other uh, unless there's someone who's going to help me do a part of that, someone at, that I know, even if they're not like CWJ, there's the three things, even if they're a Trinitarian, a Mormon, a Catholic, if they'll work with me, if I get that feeling, right, they kind of know a little bit about me, they know I was um, Watchtower Joe's Witness, I'm CWJ, and I kind of just, but, I, but they kind of, accept me as sincere you can tell when someone does right even if you don't agree on things like you know even things like the trinity and stuff right some people will still not everybody in jesus time was the same way right was everybody like the pharisee scribes sadducees who opposed him no right you who did he say gave more than all of them i meant i kind of got into this earlier and then we started going a little bit off but i want to come back to it the widow right who gave the two small coins of value well, she was a part of that system. And no doubt you know people who are part of all of these other systems, right? All of them that we named and more. So we're never going to be able to identify all the poor widows or people who are like the ones who are actually approved, even if they're a part of groups who have people opposing the truth. Right? So we have that model in the Bible. It shouldn't be a big surprise that we have the same thing today. So it, it's not abandoning people who are in these different groups to not engage them, right? If you can tell someone's going to work with you, great. Do what you can. Just be aware, and, and you know, and the more they'll work with you, the more you can be the more comfortable. Right? You get to know a person, but you still, because of the influence, right? You you could have gotten close to a person like the widow with two coins, especially probably right. But remember the other people. Of the, of the synagogues, of the Pharisees and the scribes, Sadducees. And many others, they were believing in Jesus and what he was doing, but then what? They became afraid. They became afraid of getting kicked out. So you're gonna, you're, there are going to be people in all of these groups that fit this same profile. I don't see how that's going to be a part of us, right? Because we only have three things. It's only if someone tries to go beyond and add more in ways... It would be same as a three that would become a problem and be easy to identify. But since we give so much freedom, we have a lot less likelihood of becoming like these groups that develop these extensive rules and expectations that while in many ways not unreasonable or bad, they're not necessary. Or if they're just not supported by the text like the Trinity, right? Right. Well, you want to believe in the Trinity? You really think that's necessary? Helps you deal with monothe polytheism, monotheism? Fine. Just don't require it of us, okay? They won't do that. Many of them will not do that. Maybe a few, right? Like the one who would rep be represented by the widow and others. But then they'd become afraid of the scholars and the Trinitarian nuts. So then, so there's, they have divisions within their groups. We have to be aware of that, right? They're not all like the antagonistic apologists that come after us and you know, try to uh, burden us. They, they're, for some reason, so concerned about us. They have to, to actively contradict what we do. We don't have to do that, right? I mean, 
I don't. I mean, I, I can and I do at times, but I'm not like, worried about it. I don't actively go to their chats and videos in ways where I just, I'm so concerned about their presentation. I think it's great, right? Let people watch Trinitarian videos, watch my videos, let, watch any, and then make a decision. I want you to make a decision based on the best available evidence. And then I want you to get started with the mission. Living as a Christian. It's the best way, at least for me, right? And especially if you follow the three, because that's really what we were meant to do, along with everything else individually. We weren't meant to be held accountable in the ways that all these different groups try to forcefully control you and contain your eyes. They're the exact same ways in many respects as those who opposed Jesus and then kept everyone else in check in ways that they didn't really want to be. But because of fear and pressure, and you know, unless you were just some poor widow that they didn't care about, you couldn't do anything with sincerity in ways that would be a public expression of thanks that would be accepted. Right? So we're going to have a little bit of a difficulty, meaning people like you and me who don't fit into the broader groups of Christianity. We're going to have a little bit of a difficulty at times, and maybe a lot of difficulty. We may have the most difficulty, sad to say, from people who are very close to us in our faith. So we have to be careful, right? Don't, don't be so quick to widen your circle. In fact, my recommendation would be Keep your circle fairly small unless you already have a reliable and fairly good-sized group of people you can trust. And then just try to work with each other to better yourselves in ways that will, by your example, hold people accountable, right? Most people who are trying to be disruptive or practice bad things, right, Uh, you know, Um, infiltrate or or cause disruption to people. And there are just people that don't like persons working together to further things like religion or Christianity. They're there. Many, many uh, people absolutely do not like the practice of religion and especially Christian religion. Or they think that because we're Christian, right, we're like everybody else who is a Christian, right? We have to bear the burdens of everybody else who has called themselves Christian and then been either discriminatory or even against, you know, as we've been talking about their own people, but against others as well. So, you know, we have to watch out in some respects for people who who follow a different moral code, right? So we've talked about previously on this show. And so we have very clear principles in the Bible involving, you know, heterosexuality, homosexuality. But in many places like the United States, practices like homosexuality are legal. Well, so as Christians, even though that's not a practice we follow, right? We know it's not a, a, a practice we were designed by Jah to be involved with. It damages people. It takes off, on average, 20 years of people's life, according to certain studies, recent studies. All kinds of um, physiological trauma, spiritual and emotional difficulties, right? I mean, it's not unknown. Right? It's just they don't want to talk about it. Many homosexuals don't want to discuss the problems from that lifestyle. And so we, we often will accommodate that, right? We don't want to go around making, making people who are legally allowed to be homosexuals feel bad, right? At least I don't. I don't go around, you know, every time I find a homosexual and just say, you know, that's so bad for you, you know? <laughs> if there's a situation and a setting and they want to talk to me, I've had a lot of conversations with homosexuals. I never just start out in an antagonistic manner. I, I figure they already know, Right? They already know whether what's good about it or what's not, but they like it. That's what they choose to do. They don't like Christianity, whatever, but I do. It doesn't mean I hate them as a person, right? Just because same with a Trinitarian, right? So why would I hate a homosexual? I follow the golden rule. I follow the Messiah. I don't. I don't agree with their practice. I can show it's not a good thing. So how how is that hateful or fearful of anything? I just think it's bad for you. Very bad for you. Like the worst. Am I, am I exaggerating? No, I can show you facts. So, 
but they're not going to like that, right? So you could tell a Trinitarian, hey, look, look at these texts, right? Galatians 3.20, John 10, <laughs> Philippians 2, Hebrews 1, I mean, on and on and on. So it's not going to really make a difference most of the time. They already know them, right? Most Trinitarians know those texts and maybe not the same way we do. And there's, sometimes there's a need to kind of fl further clarify translation issues, but like not all the time. But most of the time they even know those, right? They, they, they're not ignorant of most of the texts we're thinking of. They just don't agree. Same with homosexuals, right? They're not ignorant of what happens to them. They know they can't have children naturally. They know that in terms of male homosexuality, right, that they, 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 they have to be involved with proctology, right? They're going to have a ruptured rear end if, if they're practicing sodomy. It's just fact. They're not meant for that. It's not, you know, again, unknown. You're going to have a lot of problems physiologically. You know, I don't want to get off on into it in ways, but I'm just pointing out, you see the similarity in a way that, like with Trinitarians, right? Well, I, well, we try to, at least me, you know, accept them in ways where I still disagree. So, you know, I'm not practicing hate or, or trying to promote division, but they will to me. I mean, some do. Same with certain non-Christian groups, like in this example, homosexuals. There's some homosexuals who are very nice people, even if they think, you like think what they're doing is terrible or whatever, they they don't care. Right? <laughs> they you know they may not really like that you think that or, or but if they think that and you don't like talk about it in that way and you're just nice to them, then they're just like normal people. Right? They just they do things that are not normal in other ways, right? But otherwise you wouldn't know the difference. And you would think in many cases, in my opinion, the people I know are some of the best people in terms of like just normal interaction. Okay. But some of them also, like with Trinitarians, they're going to hate you for trying to live as a Christian. By hate, you know, they're little, you know, obviously there's going to be degrees and variances among people, but, but the hate will be shown at times because, well, in my experience, they, some of them, because they believe you think so negatively of them that they react to your perceived hatred of what they do or them and the way they think about it or maybe even the way some have talked to them like some of the other Christians in groups or maybe just people right? we don't agree with them right so it's not going to be a positive discussion if you're a Christian and you're talking to another Christian or someone about homosexuality it's probably not going to be a positive discussion is it why would it be right unless you're just trying you're just in general talking about the people in, in non in ways apart from the, the destructive practice right but that doesn't mean that we uh, hate them or dislike them. We just don't like the practice, right? And anyone who isn't involved with it is not involved with it because it's bad for them. Or at least that's how they see it. So well, with, with many homosexuals, that's not how they see it. They probably still realize that, they, that it's bad for them, but they don't care. And so like with the Trinitarians who really think you're in error, like the way of Caiaphas, like Athanasius right there, they're going to see your disagreement with them as like the end of the line. And if they can, if they can hurt you really in some way, it may be physical, it may be spiritual, it may be leveraging at the job or somewhere else. There are people who will do that. And so that's why I said as living as a Christian, you have to be prepared for people in these different Christian groups. There are some who will be just, you know, normal and acceptable. But if they disagree on key things, you're going to have a problem with some of them on some level at some point. And so just think about how you want to talk to them and what would be the best way, if at all. Right. I try not to really engage anyone who has already confessed the son in ways that after doing so, they don't really want to engage me directly. Like someone who wants to talk to me about anything, I'll talk to them. Unless I've already done it, you know, enough times. But otherwise, if I think they already believe they've confessed, and I don't think I can effectively change anything they're doing, and I might make it worse, I don't do anything. Right? Well, I don't want to get involved between them and their declared master. I can still think they're in error. Right? I'm not going to sanction what I think a person is teaching that's wrong. But that doesn't mean I think I can effectively change them for the better by telling them that. 
or that it's going to be better for me in the shorter long term, especially if I'm with them regularly. You see, people will hold it against you, whether they're Christians of another group, whether people of another group are not Christian, like homosexuals, right? And they see Christians as the enemy. Many do. Religious people, but Christians also, especially in many cases because of our views. But we're not like, at least I'm not trying to stop homosexuals. I don't think it's a good practice, you know, practicing um, the lifestyle of being a homosexual. I don't, I don't see any benefit of it. I've never been shown any study or example that provides a legitimate benefit from living that way. I realize people feel good at times living that way because, you know, they're, they're in a relationship and they do things like simulations of sex, but using different organs in ways that are not healthy. So, um, in any case, so, you know, that those reasons show that it's not a, a, the normal way to do that um, a type of activity. But it's allowed. So, I'm not going to attempt to change it unless the allowance, right? Unless the allowance of some activity develops to such an extent that it's now becoming the norm and re- almost required acceptance in ways that if you don't, then then what you are doing is not allowed in some way or looked down upon. So that's not acceptable ever. Right? We never allow truth to be buried by error. Right Now, we don't need to go uncovering every single thing. Like I said, we focus on three, right? There's all kinds of things. but Because then you'll just get lost in a nonstop uh, attempt to fix everyone. You can't do that. You, you can barely fix anyone. You can, you can barely help fix yourself with God's spirit, right? <laughs> but so many people, right? What does Jesus say you, the, to the Jews? We've been talking about the, the scribes and Pharisees and scholars who opposed him. You travel land and sea to make one convert and you make him just as subject, much subject to destruction as yourselves, right? Didn't do any good. All that effort, all that work. So sometimes it's not about just trying to do everything you can in a certain way, but more so about being aware of your circumstance, the people you're around, and if possible, working first and foremost with them, right? Because that's where you're going to grow best. The people you're going to see most often are the people who you need to kind of have an understanding of best because you might take them for granted. But you, you shouldn't. You should be aware, okay, or, or at least before you start to relax in a sort of taking for granted way, you're like, okay, I know this person. I can sort of back off. You never want to fully let your guard down, but especially in, a, in social places where people don't agree because it becomes very competitive, especially when people get desperate or when they want something. And you're just trying to survive or just grow like on a normal merit basis or whatever. Not everyone's that way, right? See, they'll see you as weak. You're this weak Christian, Maybe, right? Because they think, well, you're you're trying to treat others fairly and that's not how they are, right? Especially if they're Luciferian or they're just not interested in any kind of moral principle at all except get everything you can out of life, right? Survival of the fittest, like like just in an animalistic way at, at all costs, at everyone else's expense, get what you can take. <laughs> never works out right and you never get to take anything with you. But they try to take it anyways if it has some permanent value. And that's really the test we're under today. So... You have to be aware of those kind of people, though, or they'll take from you. You're trying to be this nice person, aren't you? I mean, you're, you maybe maybe you're talking to a Trinitarian. You think you can help them out, and they're really thinking, you know, you're a he- you're you're like like Athanasius says on the way of Caiaphas. See, so and you need to understand who you're talking to, and if you're talking to someone who really doesn't like you probably, you know, you should limit your involvement with that person, right? How is it really going to benefit you? You're just going to become antagonistic. Unless you're just looking for a fight. But that never really ends right. And it will never make you happy. Right? Is that not what the biblical text shows us? Doesn't it tell us explicitly to turn down fights? So the Lord doesn't need to fight? But sometimes, you know, we know we need to do I mean, it's talking about in the extended way right, where you're seeking it out, right? You're constantly trying to get involved in these debates and arguments. And that that rarely promotes belief. You've, studies have shown that the more you argue and there's this contention among people, m- most people hearing it don't aren't aren't drawn to it. They may be drawn to the spectacle and some for their own sick pleasure, right? They, 
But that's not what we're shown in terms of the model we have. It happens because people seek out the Christ and others who follow him, right? And they track him down, they corner him, it says, and then they, they just start plying him with questions, right? Instead of what? Instead of out teaching the text, right? Instead of out follow, helping people follow the law, helping people honor Jehovah God, they didn't want to do that. The scribes, the Pharisees, the scholars, they wanted to go after Jesus and his followers and disrupt them. See? So you might become a Christian, you know, you're doing these things. And, and, and that's still what I think you should do. And that's what all the evidence and best historical information that we talk about a lot on this channel points to. But you still need to learn how to live as a Christian. And that's a different thing than becoming a Christian based on the evidence. Living as a Christian is going to involve a lot of situations and tests um, that will that will at times make you forget the reasons you became a Christian in the first place. If you're not careful. And so while we have a much better opportunity with these three things and the way we go about, you know, handling what we're doing and talking about it and giving people space, it does it's still gonna be the case that going forward, wherever it is you go or people you're with, whether you have family that are, you know, a part large part of a certain group or, or at work, people have a, a predominant point of view, you still need to try to gain an understanding of the people you are around. Be patient. Right? If you think you need to minister to someone, even a Trinitarian or other that you think is just, you know, I'm not saying you never talk to people of, you know, Christian faith, right? Some people need that. Some people are not, they're, they're following the wrong path and, and, and you can help them out. And even where it relates to certain things, right? They may be struggling with things like the Trinity in ways that are um, spilling over into their activity. And so it's like, okay, well, what's going on here? And so you end up talking about more than one thing, Trinity 2, you're helping this person. So that, that can happen very easily. Or maybe a person with the Watchtower, right? They're, they're not really sure about the Watchtower anymore on some certain levels, but they still kind of believe. And they, need, they want to talk to you about it in ways that still require you to discuss, right, whether or not they're the faithful slave. So you, you'll get involved in these discussions regardless of whether... You, would, you try to, like me, avoid people who are already familiar with these texts, right? Because they're not, even though they're familiar and they they, they pray, they, they've kind of accepted Jesus in, in certain ways, like being a part of these groups, they're falling off or they're weak. Their, their acceptance wasn't totally correct the way it needed to be or hasn't matured to the extent that it's based solely on the right things, right? God, the Christ, best reasons, not humans, Right, now, all these extra rules and things that people um, um, add to the texts, especially when it comes to metaphysics, right? So there are a lot of different situations and people that you'll find yourself dealing with, and well, I think for the most part you'll find it easier living as a Christian, not engaging in regular debate and argument with others who are claiming to live as a Christian but with different. Um, beliefs or, or habits. I think that the less you do that, the happier you'll be because it will lessen your antagonism with others of the same faith that will make your experience of that faith with people who also have and claim the same things. It, it, it will make that less difficult. It will make it less... See, over time, if you do this continuously, like I've referred to certain apologetic nuts and others... <laughs> As like spiritually punch drunk, right? And what happens like in the real world when a boxer or a MMA fighter, whomever, they get hit a lot, right? And they're just like, they, after a certain fighter, maybe they've been dominant for a while, they get knocked out. But it, 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 they're never the same again. Because humans weren't meant to be hit in those ways repeatedly. It damages you. Right? It, it, no matter what you do over time, some people can get away with it a little bit. Especially Floyd, right? He never got hit. <laughs> but either way, it damages you pretty much. Well, in a spiritual sense, you're getting punched. You're getting hit by all these different people and beliefs and situations and things. And 
So how much more of that do you want to have every day? If you're like me, I mean, I'm trying to keep that to a bare minimum. I look for the right moment, right? If there's a knee situation, can I be effective? That's really it, right? Is this this person ready for me? (laughs) Is this person really ready to talk or not? Or can I just plant a seed? Right? So we know the biblical example is that we plant Others grow. If you're living as a Christian, the view you should have in dealing with other people, even if it's other Christians, quote-unquote, you think are having difficulty, maybe you don't need to engage them completely in like an argument or an extensive session of, you know, text back and forth type thing, right? That happens. Maybe you just need to do one little thing. Try to keep it uh, like as simple as possible. What do you think of this? Have you read this text? I've always wondered about what Jesus meant when he said, and then just one thing. If it's natural, right? You want to, you want people can tell when you're sincere, but the moment comes up, then you just be sincere about it, right? Think, what can I do to to plant here? So planting means what? It means finding the right soil. Right? So the right person in this case, you can't you just aren't going to be able to plant in everyone. Sorry, it's just not the not gonna happen every day even. But there are gonna be times where you're like, okay, this seems right, this is a good situation. I just now I need to do something. So when you find the right soil, you dig the hole to the right depth, you put the seed in it, you cover it back up. Give it a little food, water, let it grow, right? You leave it alone, do you not? Do you just stay around it and keep keep giving it water, right? You water it, water goes away, you wait five minutes, and then you water it again just every five minutes? No, you'll kill it. You'll oversaturate the ground. Do you put it in the ground, get it all nice and ready, plant it, and then never come back? Now, with a real plan, of course, there's a more regular schedule. And so it might not be as readily available in a person, right? But nonetheless, you see what I'm saying? Then, as the plant starts to grow, you do what? You make sure it's growing the right way, depending on what plant it is. It's getting enough sunlight. It's not going to get choked off by weeds and things. So it requires regular attention over time. Perfect illustration. That's what we're called to do. It's pretty much it. And having a simplified view, whether it's just the three things, right? Those are those are the seeds. And one, two, and three are our seeds. How can we plant belief in God? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of Moses. The God of the Bible. The God that we can show most likely from history exists as the eternal intelligent life that gave life to life. How can we plant a seed in someone? Well, if they already believe in God as a religious person in some sense or as a Christian, but they're kind of falling away or in some sense not really committed yet. Well, okay, we know the seed might be more as it relates to biblical things, right? Some things that will help them get more um, motivation for their faith. Whereas if it's a person who doesn't believe in God at all, they're more atheistic, then the seed you might consider planting for belief in God is something scientific, right? Life only comes from life. Happens every day, multiple times a day, by mo- all of every living species it reproduces according to its type. Every- so it's, it's, re- it's not just like it's happened once or twice. <laughs> life always comes from life. There's no exception. And, and you cannot, ha- life does not come from non-living things ever. There's always something alive that's involved with whatever it is. So scientifically, life can only come from life and therefore must be eternal because there can't be a break in that chain, otherwise life wouldn't be here. right? If life can only come from life, life has to be eternal. And so that establishes the truthfulness of the concept that's often too difficult for people to grasp. It's still difficult to grasp, is it, is it not? Can you grasp eternality? Right? No, what? We know what it is, right? Because we had a start, and so it's, it's what didn't have a start. 
But we know it exists because we exist. We are. And we can only come from what previously existed and so all the way back and therefore forever. Otherwise, it wouldn't happen in the way that it happens every day. We would have life coming from non-life as well. You see what I'm saying? To show that it could take place. That is not the case. So you can take even a very difficult concept that I've elaborated more on other, in other videos, but that is very important nonetheless. And you can explain it just like that, right? Life only comes from life. I know eternal is kind of difficult to grasp, but we are here, right? We're alive. Isn't that kind of difficult to grasp as well? Right? So if there was a time when life didn't exist, isn't it also difficult to grasp the life that exists now coming from non-life? Well, <laughs> that would be a lot more difficult to grasp than life coming from life, would it not? <laughs> because we can grasp that. So you can then show by comparison that the, the more difficult thing to grasp is life coming from something that's not alive. And then show that actually what happens every day is the difficult thing that while we still can't fully grasp, we can nonetheless accept because we can show that's how it happens. Whereas the other one, we can't. And it's even more difficult to grasp and we can't show it happens. It's more difficult to grasp because we can't show it happens, right? So you can use these little things to plant seeds in different types of individuals. And then maybe they have certain knowledge or their issue isn't quite about God, but maybe maybe they're a Jewish person who believes in God and even a good part of the Bible, but they don't believe in Jesus as the Messiah. Well, you know, maybe it's not about trying to convince them about the heaviest prophetic texts of Daniel or some of our, you know, more difficult applications of, of certain texts. You know, maybe we should think of the best one we can. The one that is least subject to controversy in terms of dating and um, what the Jews already accept as far as their texts. And then try to use that. Pick, pick something the best, right? Hopefully, try the best for the situation, right? Just like we talked about with a person who doesn't believe in God and a person who does in terms of our belief number one. You have to figure out what's you know what kind of person you're dealing with, but so the best relative to that, but you still to try to simplify it. You're gonna go a lot farther with somewhat somebody, even if they you know are very, maybe you're talking with a Jewish person, they're very con convicted, right? And they they even read the Bible in Hebrew and stuff. That's okay. That's even better. Think of something they can see, and use it to show why you believe what you do, and have them think about it or tell you about it more. Our beliefs are good. We have solid reasons, right? It's not like they're going <laughs> to create a problem for us, right? We're here for this reason. We can, we can discuss these texts in any all the languages. We can look at all the evidence and we have to a great extent. So when it comes to the Messiah, you know, that's, you know, it's, that's when we can handle certain individuals who may have belief in the Bible or in God, but not in the Christ or Jesus, or maybe with people who believe in even the Christ, right? Jesus, but who don't, really, don't believe in his pre-existence. Or like we've been talking about to some extent, you know, maybe they believe in the Trinity, right? He's eternal in the same way that God is or the Father as persons of the one God, sharing the nature of God equally eternally. Right? So maybe you're going to you're gonna have a situation where you are going to engage one or more of those types of views. Well, same thing. Right? You have to get all involved and, and, and go into and full on debate right if you're going to discuss these things especially socially or even with family and people that might hold it against you if you don't do it right or even if you do just because you don't agree with their view they're going to hold it against you most people are going to do that i wish it weren't true and i hope it isn't it just it definitely seems like that i have to say today it seems a large majority of people are prepared to discriminate against you whether it's for, um, you know, living as a Christian and or if you're a Christian and they claim to live as a Christian, the different Christian views. Or if you're living as a Christian morally and you don't agree with certain uh, moral trends, homosexuality, gender confusion, <laughs> right? Things you can show are not good for you and that you don't agree with for good reasons, right? They're not healthy for you. They're, in fact, 
they're bad for you. They have a negative effect. It's not just like a non-positive. It's a negative. And you're not making it up. You're not being overly mean. It's a fact. It just sounds that way because of the way they protect some of their habits, their, their <laughs> practices. And some are not easy to talk about, right? But if we don't, then we lose the, the ability to, to, to make sure people understand what they are. If we can't talk about it to a certain extent, even things like sodomy and what is involved in certain of these abusive practices, right? we're not saying don't do it. If the law is you can do it, and you're with a consenting person and they want you to abuse them or they want to abuse you sexually, even if you you don't see it as abuse, it doesn't matter, right? We know what happens when certain organs are used for purposes other than what they were designed for, right? It's not hard to show what certain organs are for. In fact, it's very easy. It's not, that, not the same thing like we were talking about with the Trinity and other religious views, right? We can show all these texts they still might not care and they still might use it against you, whether it's another Christian of a different group, another person of a, with a different moral point of view. We haven't really even talked a lot about politics and things like that, right? <laughs> so, but you, as we know, that would be the same case as well. That's why even though in, in terms of Christian witnesses of Jah, it's up to you to decide what you're going to do in terms of politics, right? But we're not, you are not to individually promote, right? If you want to tell someone what you're doing and why, fine. But you don't make an issue of it. You don't create division among Christians over a political view. And Now, you know, I will say this. If there's a political issue that directly relates to a Christian issue, then probably we should be talking about that, right? Should we not be trying to make sure to the extent we can that socially we're able to do things that we want to, right? If those become compromised or if certain political parties or persons are promoting things or trying to create more difficulty for us and we're allowed by law to resist that without doing things that would compromise one, two, or three, you should do that, right? Why wouldn't you do that? Why wouldn't you try to help better the promotion of Christianity, right? Not by making it worse for other people, but by resisting those who are trying to make it worse for you, right? If all it involves is just saying no or yes to this or that, and one is clearly going to help you promote Christian teachings or principles, I mean, it seems pretty clear what you should do. But it's up to you, right? There's no requirement. The requirement is you treat others the way you want to be treated. Right? So if you want to be left alone with your politics, you leave everybody else alone with their politics. You want to be involved with someone else in their politics? Then they get to be involved with you in your politics. Hopefully it won't create a division and confuse the main issues that we're here to practice as members of Christian religion. But everyone must choose, right? We're not going to make an issue out of it. One, two, or three, that's it. And we give a lot of room so I suggest you take it and practice as much as you can in the ways that are going to benefit you, right? Not expose you. It's hard because we, we're here to promote certain things, right? We're here to teach like about God where we can, not like in a distracting way, but we're here to, you know, give thanks to the extent possible, help other people appreciate what's happening, right? And so in doing that, we still have to be alert to the people who could react. Not everybody, in, in fact, probably, depending on where you are, the majority of people are not going to like attempts to pressure them to believe a certain way. Right? That's what the Trinitarian Apologetic Nuts sometimes do, or even other nuts, right? If, you're not, if certain people who follow the Watchtower, if they find you no longer follow it, they, they, they'll come after you, right? Why aren't you doing this? All oh, you're that... Right? It bothers them. Certain people who believe in the Trinity, it bothers them that you don't believe in the Trinity. Certain people who are homosexual, it bothers them that you don't like what they do. It doesn't bother me. I don't care if you don't like what I do on any level. Right? I mean, I may not want to be around you a whole lot, right? So, but I don't worry ever about whether somebody else likes what I do. Unless, you know, 
I think I might be leveraged or pressured in a way that I have to foresee or try to manage, right? That's what I'm talking about. It's the whole point of the show today. I want, we talk about the Trinity enough, and we will again, right? We try to keep it balanced, and it comes up. And we talk about a lot of other subjects too. And we talk about some of the things we're talking about right now as well. But I wanted to, since I didn't have the redo of um, Ancient Aliens and the Flood done for today, I didn't want to get into the Trinity again on the heels of part five. I want, you know, this, we've done a lot and I need, I want people to reflect on a lot of what, what I've said in those, those shows to this point and some other videos I'm putting up. And then I want to get into our text, but you know, I, I want us to also have regular periods where we just talk, where we just sort of have a little bit of time where we can discuss the things we're dealing with in life as Christians, right? We should by now have a pretty good grasp on, you know, how to deal with the Trinity, right? We'll still talk about it, but, you know, we, we should have enough information for most subjects that come up. But when it comes to living life, there's always something that comes up. Something that in having a discussion like this, I think helps us to see ways where we can better manage our presentation, or just our our person. Remember, we're planting, we're watering, and then God makes it grow, right? So we want to we want to plant the right kind of seed, depending on what what kind of person we're talking to and what they believe or don't believe. And then we don't want to overwater it, right, and kill it by trying to do too much good. That happens a lot. And we don't want to ignore it after we've already spent the time to put something in the ground just right. So there's a balance. There's something that as an individual you have to see and that you pray to God to see and then maybe we can help people with But But you know best, right? You're dealing with it. You're planting it. And then, you know, if you're just learning how to plant things, right? What do you do? You, learn, you read other things. You find out online. Okay, how do I best plant this? Sometimes... Depending on what you get, a plant or seeds, you have instructions. So you you can learn by reading what other people do, how they plant, how they make it grow. But that should be our focus, right? Planting seeds, right? Just seed right there. Seed right there. Come back, water this, water that. Well, let's see which way is John making that grow. Yeah, I see a leaf or I see a plant growing there. And then over time, we begin to become what we believe right? and so it becomes more evident that we're practicing our faith in the right way and so i think uh, you know we'll just be happier if we can limit our exposure and involvement with a lot of these different antagonists religious or not right all kinds of people who want to argue with you antagonize you they do me <laughs> but it's up to me to to allow that right i mean if i don't engage if I don't take the time, I don't have to respond, right? I know what people think. I know what Trinitarians, they are like really against me, think of me. So it's not a surprise. I don't ever worry about it, right? I, why would it, that's not going to change anything. I already know that this is what it comes with, right? And as long as I feel good about what I'm doing, as long as I don't feel like I'm lying, right? I'm mispresenting, I'm holding something back. If I genuinely believe I'm doing what's right, why would I care about other people who don't see it? They're not me. They're not accountable for what I believe. They're accountable for what they believe. That's why I never really try, I never go to them, right? Especially if they already know and they read, I just, okay, you know. Doesn't mean I won't help if I can, but that's, see, that's, they're not the main target. They're like, they're like the last people we should be focusing on because they're like already planted, right? That's overwatering. You gotta think of debating like like nonstop. I'm not talking about the individual times or where it, it can be done right occasionally. Right? This is like not like every day or every week type thing. But you should think of like regular people who regularly do that. I mean, they're done, they're not only openly defying the the text, right, and following in the line of the Pharisees and others. Right, this is what they did, right? And Jesus would respond when he had to and when he was cornered. What, but it's not like what he, he didn't seek them out. So you should think of that as like overwatering. 
You're doing too much. You don't need to do that. And it's going to end up killing the plant that you spent all that time putting in the right soil, covering up, getting right. Now, now you're basically ruining your own work. Or if someone else keeps telling you to do something that's not correct, you're just following the wrong guidance, right? Sometimes you have to go through a period of learning, right? Where you realize, oh, that didn't work. That wasn't a good use of my time, right? So that, that's life too. So never think that just because one of your plants died that you can't plan again. That's the opposite of how you should feel. That's, you're going to have some, some seeds that don't, don't spring up for one reason or another in life. Right? Maybe you didn't plant the right seed. Maybe it wasn't the right person. You won't be able to determine all those things that's for Jah to do, right? Who makes it grow? So, just try to do your best to plant the seeds where you can, when you can. And it is rarely going to be something really extensive, right? Like this. And sometimes something like this with certain people listening that, that we're planting seeds. But most of us already believe, right? This is what I'm talking about. See, why would we do this, you know, overly with Trinitarians. They already claim to believe. So unless they're going to do it the way we're doing it now, all right, positively promoting belief, right? <laughs> unless we're going to do this with them, what's the point? Unless it's one of those occasions where, okay, this person doesn't really know what's happened. They're new. There are times where we do have to stop and go over some of these things we've talked about many times. But not very rare. It's very rare you're just meeting someone who has no clue of what's going on. And you have to go over it, right? Unless you're just doing a lot of, of direct contact type stuff. But usually online, right? It's people who already know. So unless I'm able to do something like this. Where I'm, hope, I'm gaining encouragement from your comments in the chat. I see them. I see some of your questions I'll try to get to, but, you know, we're sort of just talking about the same things, right? I mean, it's how can we live best? We, we know we have beliefs that are accurate and we believe correct. We've got great reasons. We're continuously putting them together so that we can see them and, and share them with others. So we, we've got a good thing here in association with these texts. How can we then maximize that in our living condition so that we have the, the most benefit in every respect, right? So limiting, arguing with people who claim to believe, right? That's just going to depress us unless we absolutely think we can help, right? There's always a little exception, but for the most part, you're not going to help many people who claim to believe in God or Christ by arguing with them. In fact, you more likely than not are going to depress yourself and hurt their faith, right? They'll start to doubt and then who knows if they'll even reconnect in the right way. Sometimes you have to do it, right? Sometimes you have to take that chance. All the time? That's going to increase your risk of uh, killing plants, I think. That's overwatering. Right? That's not how you make things grow. That's not how you put the seed the right way and then God can best make it grow. Right? If you're constantly interfering with Jehovah's ability to make what you planted grow, well, you're just... You're, <laughs> does that make sense? Right? You're just going to make Jehovah think you're, 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 you're confused. Right? Or you, just, you haven't matured yourself yet in a way where he's not going to take full advantage of what you're trying to 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 do in his name and then you'll end up having to be correct in one to one extent or another or you'll find yourself no longer doing the kind of planting that's going to work that way so there's there's a perspective i think it's just very important that we have no matter what whether we're at work or at school with families i i mean at this point today i think almost anywhere we are we have to pay attention to living as a Christian. We have to not spend the majority of our time. You can if you want. I'm not telling you, you know, I'm not saying it for rule. I mean, these are texts, right? They tell us not to debate, not to fight. 
Not, and so, like, not more than is necessary, right? So, if we know those things don't produce faith, right? They don't, they're not going to help our children become strong, right? They might, they might stimulate some things, but they're going to make some people think we just can't get along, right? I think most people who want to worship God want to feel good. Not just in the touchy-feely way that, oh, I, I feel good. I mean, feel good because we're worshiping the real God, right? That we're really here. We're really, we're really worshiping God. You know what I'm saying? He's here. We're here. We're on the earth. We've moved this far. And here we are. Okay, we want to enjoy that, right? We know we're not in a world that's fully influenced by God. We have many of his rebellious sons who are allowed right now to influence a lot of us. And that's why you see a lot of this conflict. And yet, the sort of cohesion at the same time. Right? What did Jesus say? If Satan divides against Satan, how is he going to stand? Well, we know as Christians, if we divide against ourselves, we're not going to be able to come together where two or more are gathered in his name and affect anything, right? You see, by being divided, we have allowed ourselves not to make that text effective. We have allowed ourselves to make Jesus' teaching that where two or more of us come together in his name less effective because we, we keep questioning whether we should come together, whether we should eat the bread and the wine. These are things, they should already be in line and we're doing them and we're affecting things in the name. You see, the world tries to keep us from that. Even in these different religions, it's like, We can't even come together as two or three regularly, have bread and wine and praise God through Christ, come away having made requests in his name and know they are going to happen. That's what I'm talking about. And that's what's what's missing, right? Because we keep being drawn away into these other things or sometimes just the burdens of life, right? But to the extent we can limit the things that are going to deplete our faith, right? Get us involved in all these unnecessary fights. It's necessary, fine. Do what you got to do. Get back in the right line, right? We want to enjoy this life. We want to be able to make it simple enough for us and for other people so that when we start talking to them about the God of the Bible, it's not like, oh, my own religion, and I'll just watch how I Catholic. They start thinking of all this stuff, right? I want people, when they think about Jah and Jesus and the Bible, just like uh, three things. Give God praise. Follow the Messiah. By treating others the way you want to be treated. It's just simple stuff. We don't need to get caught up in these extended discussions, even though we might at times help people who are already caught up. We don't, you know, it's, it's pretty clear overall what we should be doing, how we should be living. We just have either allowed it to become more difficult than it needs to be, or we get drawn into the um, entanglements, to use a popular word. (laughs) Different setting, though. Uh, At least from what's popular. And Will and Jada uh, Pinkett Smith, right? (laughs) But nonetheless, we can get an entanglement of a different kind with people like Trinitarians or Watchtower others, it's just they're not happy with what we're trying to do. Right? And if we become unhappy with what they're trying to do, we could become trapped the same way. Maybe we're a little worried. We want to help some people, right? There's certain things we don't think they've thought about. But once you realize they know, right? So like with Watchtower, if a person is committed, they don't care about whether the Watchtower is right or wrong on blood. They believe that's the requirement. They're not going to take a transfusion. And then that's their view. Well, so leave them alone. Right? They know. They just told you. They can read the text. There's all kinds of stuff they could look at. They don't, they reject that we don't think that applies to blood transfusions. So it's it's a it's a fruitless effort on your part, and in fact would be counterproductive probably to continue to water that person. You see what I'm saying? You just you're gonna kill the, the potential for that seed. The seed being the discussion itself about whether it's correct. Once you have that discussion, that seed's in there. People have thought about the text. (laughs) Is that not the, 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 the way you plant seeds? The best way? 
right? You can do it in many ways, right, by example and stuff. But when you discuss a text with someone, read a text, I mean, it's the Word of God is alive and exerts power, is it not? So, you have that discussion, right? You discuss it, right? Whether it's Watchtower or Trinitarian, they tell you, no, I believe this, I think you're wrong. Okay, fine. Let's just let it go then, and you can have your belief and I'll have mine. Well, they may still hold it against you, but so you need to be aware of whether that's the case or not, right? You've got to be careful today. It's not just non-Christians who will hold the views we have against us, unfortunately. So we have to be cautious as serpents, innocent as doves. Do what we're called to do, but do it, do it with intelligence from above, right? So, and, and we don't want to keep watering someone when it's going to destroy that plant's future. Right? If, if we planted the seed and watering isn't going to keep working, let it go. Let's see what happens to that seed. Maybe, maybe another day it will grow or Jah will give us another opportunity to plant another seed in that same soil, same person. And then this one will grow. Right? Maybe the first seed won't grow because it's not the right time. person's not ready. But maybe it was sort of part of getting that, that soil, that person ready for the next seed. And then that seed grows. So we have to, I think, broaden our, our perspective on our involvement with people, right? It's not always going to be or even mostly going to be immediate. It's going to take time. And we should therefore take time, you know, revealing ourselves completely to people whom we can see might not really appreciate what we're about. <laughs> Even though it's just three things, right? You would think that would limit our exposure and keep us sort of out of harm's way. <laughs> but unfortunately, some of the big deal issues are one and two of our faith. So we know it's just going to continue, right? And the ones where we don't have even those issues, like with Watchtower, there are other beliefs that we don't share that, that many who belong to the Watchtower organization do. And so one and two and three aren't really going to make any difference. But maybe they will later, but not with a committed person with those sets of beliefs right now. So you have to look at each case according to what it is. Each soil might require a certain seed and it may take another seed at a later time. Don't overwater these people. Spend your time wisely. Make sure you're not constantly fighting. If you want to debate and argue, I get it, right? We're going to do some of these shows and those things are going to happen. But if you're doing that, make sure you don't overly do it. Don't overwater. Maybe you're just you're just zealous to see that plant, right? <laughs> well, I, yeah, I get it. But, you know, you don't want to kill it. So try to keep those illustrations in mind and don't lose perspective. Don't think you have to win every single time, every single argument. Have the, don't don't that will that will over time, I think, take away from your joy and ultimately your faith because you're not joyful in some ways it's going to be difficult for you to continue to justify doing what you do right we know there's hard times hardships but outside of periods like that we we should be joyful we should be living in a way that recognizes we have good reasons for faith we get it right we're not we're not promoting a whole bunch of other stuff like prophecies and visions like you have to accept it or or you're done Right? We're not making the concept of God and his metaphysics so necessary that if you don't understand the way that we who have never experienced that metaphysic in terms of our living condition, right? I'm not talking about visions or certain moments of appear in the past, but we don't know that directly. In our experience, we're physical. But if you're dealing with people who are going to make that a requirement for you, then the message is going to be far too complex to justify according to these texts. And so, to the extent that you can keep it just really simple, right? Same with the Christ, right? It can be complicated because of his coming to the earth, 
the resurrection, these things that involve the ransom. But maybe that's not where you start with somebody who's not familiar already with, you know, things like God and the teaching about life from life. There's certain points you need to start with people. So a person with really no biblical experience or belief, you come right at them with concepts like Jesus coming from heaven as a man and then being resurrected. That's a tough one. (laughs) It's a tough one. Maybe it'll be enough. Maybe it's just what they need to hear. But that's for you to find out. That's for you to put in the right seed and hopefully it's going to be something that in the right soil the right person will will stimulate belief right growth and then that plant will come out but you know if you don't pay attention or if you think that you need to continuously engage someone or if you because they they are maybe engaging you and you feel like out of pride and there's some of that that's true right we we do want to defend the faith Right? We, we don't want to ignore <laughs> challenge, but you can tell when someone has already been answered. You should be able to tell when the issue has been answered sufficiently with different persons. And once you are, that's it, right? You shouldn't think about it anymore. Once you've decided in your mind, this has been addressed with this person, who cares what they think, right? <laughs> They're still not going to like you, but, but how you feel about that is going to make all the difference. And it's going to either rob you of your joy or it's going to release you to find new people who just might be more ready for the next seed you're, you're there to plant. Everything is a, plant, is a seed to plant, right? Whether we accept it or not, whether it's even a teacher or not, right? Everything we do to someone else. Um, our treatment with different persons sort of plants in them an idea, right, about us in ways that, based on the context, grow over time. So to the extent that we can, we should try to be making that plant a good one in life, right? Our fruit should be representative, for the most part, of a good tree. We make mistakes like everybody else, but those, there's a difference between people who make mistakes and who are like, yeah, I really, I didn't handle that well. And, I, and you know, I try to not do that as often as I can. And people who are like, no, I think that's fine. I'm going to keep doing as much as I can. Pretty clear difference between those two. And so you should maintain an understanding of that. Try to work with different individuals that are going to accept you in that same way. Because you're never going to grow around people who are constantly judging you, criticizing you not helping you become a better thing. Remember the thumbnail. Let's take a look at it real quick before we end the show. Let's take a look at that thumbnail that I put up. I have it right there, but let me bring it in uh, another form. Let me show you once more and then make a comment or two. So if you look at the open session 12 video, you know, when we're done with the show, but I'll show you right now. Let me bring up the two images just separately. Let's bring you guys in. So, you know, I was, I was looking for different things. Um, What would be a good way to show Christian living? You know, <laughs> how could I show Christian living in my thumbnail? And I thought, well, you know, there's so much involved, right? It's not that simple. It's not like people think, well, you just, you know, you don't do all these different sins and things, even though that's, <laughs> we sin all the time. We just don't, we don't promote it. We don't feel good about it. And we don't re- cultivate it, right? We make mistakes. We're humans. People have an odd view of Christians in that way. But I started thinking about it. I thought, well, what would be a good way for me to show Christian living, right? I thought, well, there's two real primary things involved. There's the Christian who has developed a sense of who they are and who's ready to help. 
right? I mean, they've got the proper gear. They've got the proper clothes. They're ready for the environment that they're in. And a willingness to help, right? A willingness to help people who are not where they are, but who want to be there and who are willing to work to get there. And so what happens, do you think, when this person, this Christian, in this illustration by this photo, what happens, do you think, when the person who they're helping, they've got the handout, right? What do you think this Christian does to the person they help up to where they are after they help them up? They don't need to help them anymore, do they? Not unless, you know, some other event or thing happens and we need it. But once you've received the help you need to get to where someone else is and where it's safe to be, a good place, you don't keep needing the help. You're there just like with the other person who helped get you there. And now you should do the same thing, right? Because there's someone else coming up behind you and they're going to need help too. You know why? Because of this guy. And by guy, I mean the wolf. (laughs) The non-guy or the male wolf, if it's a male. You know what I'm talking about, right? We have to face this as well. What did Jesus say? I'm sending you forth as sheep among wolves. He didn't say we run from the wolf. You run from the wolf, the wolf will just track you down from behind and you won't be able to defend yourself. You need to confront the wolf head on. Stare it right in the eye and know that you serve Jehovah. And if you handle yourself right, you can not only defeat the wolf and survive, you can help someone else do the same thing. And that's very important in Christian life. It's hard enough for us to stay that way, right? But there you've got someone else coming up behind you, whether it's your own children or other children or just new people as you grow who are going to be looking to someone who can show them how to get to the next step. How do I get to that place and have the right gear and and be ready to do the same thing, right? Well, look at the person helping you. What do they have? What are they doing? How are they prepared? Right. So what are you going to need to survive the kind of difficulty that we face living as Christians? That's really what you have to answer. That's what we all have to answer. Because if you're going to be a Christian, you're going to face things that will require you to address in one way or another. It's still a better way to address all of these things, right? Good reasons, having a knowledge of our history, of of spirituality, of different figures of the past that we can show existed historically, (laughs) historically, historically. Kind of confused historical and historicity there, but you you know what I'm saying, and essentially in that context, historically, (laughs) Might be an appropriate neologism. Either way, we want to be able to get through the difficult times that we have to face, whether they're from people of our own religion or race, 
or or people of outside of them. They're going to be there to some extent or another. We can defeat them, we can get through difficulty, and we can help one another. And that's really what I'm I'm hoping I can do. That's my main focus, right? I don't do this for a living, like for money. I mean, I sell some of my things like books and DVDs that I paid to produce and paid to print. So I you know, just pay to cover the cost of that. But for the most part, I try to be giving with most of my things that I do. And I have a separate living to take care of what I need to, to survive or help others where I can. And so, but I have to live as a Christian in life. Right? I have to go through the same trials, same experiences to, to certain degrees as you, you do. And so I know that living as a Christian is going to fall, involve you and affect you in some of the same ways. So as we grow together, let's try to work towards the same goal of helping other people live in the same way that we've come to know. So that they can get through some of the same difficulties that we had to get through. And then they can pass that on to others. One way or another, we're setting a pattern for other people to follow to some extent. And it's either based on the pattern of the master or something else. But if you're a Christian like me, you know that there's no better pattern than the master. And the master is more like this than anything else. It's a pattern of activity that looks to help people get from one level to the next. Is really, you know, happy to do so. Not trying to take advantage of you or look down on you, right? Even if they're above you in the sense that they've gone beyond, be, they've done more than you, they've been through more. This is the perspective that I think would be good to have as we go forward and try to teach the things that we've come to believe are important to have, right? And that's just three. So we're going to encounter different people. They're going to believe more than the three. There's going to be all kinds of stuff. We'll keep doing what we have to do. But I wanted to talk about this stuff, kind of bring things down a little, you know, not not be always or even regularly too focused on things like debates involving the Trinity or just uh, any kind of conflict or issue. I wanted to sort of just keep things in perspective. Have a good time with you guys while I get ready for the re-release of Ancient Aliens and the Flood, which I hope will be next Sunday. So um, until then, I will be getting some text readings ready, possibly some other videos as well. Do your best to have a joyful experience with Christian living, right? Be happy, right? It's life. You're happening right now, along with everything else. And if you've been following these videos, or if you're like me, and you study history and good evidence, reasons to believe, you should feel pretty good about yourself. Just try not to get too depressed thinking about other people who don't think the same way as you do. They do that as well. Right? So we're all subject to the same difficulties. And to that end, I hope you will uh, join me again as we do our best to promote what we think is the right religion based on three things. Keep it simple. Help as many people. And praise Jah in Jesus' name.